So let me give you kind of, you know, my kind of overview of what you should be thinking about when you're getting started in the real estate business. A couple, uh, uh, I would say these are mind, uh, mindset or mind shift things that you, you want to kind of consider. So first off, when I talk to new investors all the time, you know, they are all over the place. They want to invest in, you know, 50 minutes from them, two hours from them, the next city over, the, you know, the next three states over because they, they feel like it's cheaper in those states. Um, I know Chicago, I know, you know, Boston, some of these markets, high price markets, um, you know, just because you're, you know, um, you know, in a high price market doesn't mean that you can't, you know, succeed in those markets. So first off is just kind of finding your niche is finding where do you want to be? Is it, you know, two family residential? Is it the single family game? You can, you know, we're, we're talking about multifamily here because multifamily are po you know, popular in Boston and some other neighborhoods, but there are a lot of investors that are buying single families and renting them out. Uh, if you're in Atlanta, that might be, you know, your niche, that single family rental um, where the rents exceed the, you know, the cost of the single family here in Boston, it's probably not possible. Single families cost so much and the rents just don't, uh, will tend not to cover uh, your rent. So finding your niche, really establishing where you want to be and you have to do that. You can't um, be all things in this business. There are, there are so many different ways that you can invest in real estate between tax liens and uh, you know, probate and, you know, we'll touch upon a lot of different things tonight, but taking it some time and stepping back and saying, what do I really want to do? Is it single families? Is it multifamilies? And, and, and really understanding that. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to be able to evaluate deals. You want to be able to recognize opportunity instantly. Um, I have a very narrow niche. I, I invest in the city of Boston, but I only invest in three neighborhoods and I really only invest in one type of property. I invest in Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan, in the Boston neighborhood and I really only buy three families. So when something pops up in those neighborhoods, I know instantly whether it's something that I should drop the phone and go take a look at, put an offer in, I can almost buy property without even taking a look at it because I know my, my niche that, that well. Barriers to entry, we talked about it a little bit. Boston has a high barrier to entry, um, but you can also do less deals here or less transactions than you may have to do in some other neighborhood. So understanding your barriers to entry, you're going to have to fight, crawl, scrape, you know, drag and pull and, you know, to get into that first property in some of these uh, tougher cities. But once you do, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, you know, a great investment for you. So understand your barriers entries. Is it a low barrier entry? That probably means that you have a lot more competition, you know, out there. And that means you're probably going to have to do more volume. Is it a high barrier entry? Doesn't necessarily mean that you should change markets. It means that you're just going to have to work a little bit harder to get that first deal but you're gonna probably outwork competition that's not willing to, to, to put in that time. And that's where I am in Boston, right? The reason I'm able to succeed here is because I'm just going to outwork the competition. I know there's a high barrier to entry, right? And we're gonna talk about the numbers and playing the numbers game, right? So people look and they see, hey, Will's just bought a new multifamily. But what they don't see is the 97 uh, showings that I went to or the 97 offers that I put in that I didn't succeed on, right? Because I understand at the end of the day, this is a numbers game and I'm going to have to do volume in order to get great deals. Um, treating it like a business. Once you buy that first multifamily, people, there, there's this, um, it's, it's unlike buying a single family or buying a condo. You're buying a home in those situations, right? You pay your mortgage, you live there, and that's kind of it. When you buy a multifamily property, you buy a rental property, you're buying a business and you have to treat it like that. A lot of people still treat it like it's their home, even if you live there and you're living on one side and somebody lives on the other. If you're living in one level and there's two levels above you that you're renting, you have purchased a business and you now are running a business. You have